Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. I know it's been a while since I've made an actual video, but we're back and it's a good one. I'm teaching you how to live stream Infinite Flight like a pro, um, or at least how I stream it anyway, right? <laughs> to be a relatively lengthy video um, so I do apologize but it's going to be very in-depth and I'm going to explain it to the best of my ability sometimes I'm not very good at explaining things but I will try my very best of course yeah as I said it's gonna be lengthy I'll break it up into timestamps that you're e easily able to distinguish which part of the video that's actually useful to you so with that being said let's jump straight into it let's not stall for too long it'll be um it'll be good to crack on because I don't like using up uh, gigabytes on my SD card for this camera so let's go Anyway, um, let's look down here on my desk. These are the basic pieces of equipment that you need to stream. And I'll go through these individually and then explain how to connect them all up. So of course, you go in to need an iPad. Doesn't necessarily have to be an iPad. It could also be an Android device, whatever you like, an iPhone, an Android phone, Samsung. I don't know, anything you want to. You go in to need an iPad or an Android device. Some form of adapter, of course, I'm not too sure. I'm not too familiar with Android. So if you are going to do this on there, you are going to have to do a little bit of your own research, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure it'd be a similar concept to what I'm doing here. Um, this is a HDMI to USB-C adapter for the iPad so that we can capture the gameplay uh, onto the capture card eventually. Next up, you need a HDMI to HDMI cable, which is just a HDMI cable. I don't know why I said it like that. You then need um, a power cord and a capture card. So a capture card allows you to capture the gameplay from external devices, whether that be an Xbox, a PlayStation, an iPhone, or an iPad. This particular capture card here is the Elgato HD60X. I don't use this one. The one that I do use is currently under here. It's stuck to the side of my PC, so there it is. It's up there somewhere. I use this capture card, the HD60S, and I've used this ever since I started streaming. I would recommend getting the same one if you can, because I know for sure that this one actually works. But I'm pretty sure that this one would also work as well. The reason why we have this one is because it was an Oshkosh device. We tried to use this with the M1 iPad and it didn't work. And that's another talking point very quickly. I would just like to mention that the M1 chips in Apple devices aren't compatible with Elgato, more so for Windows. It's a whole other story. You can do some research on this, but just to highlight that and put it out there. M1 iPads like the iPad Pro over here or the, um, the iPad Air, which we're sort of using as a demo here at the moment, but just because it's a small device the other iPads are bigger. They aren't very compatible. Um, you can get it to work and just keep in mind that the HD60X is the only current Elgato capture card that supposedly works with M1 chips, but I haven't got it to work yet. It, just, it doesn't work for me, which is really annoying. Anyway, yeah, back onto the subject. This is pretty much the magic box. Let me explain now how that actually works and how to set that up. So moving back to the iPad then, this will be our first step. What we need to do is we need to get this adapter and plug this in to the bottom. I'm trying to do this with one hand, by the way. There we go. Dongles, we all love them. Now from here, what you need to do is get your HDMI cable and plug one end into the adapter. I'm struggling so much here. Let me see if I can get this. Bingo, right? There we go. Now that's plugged into that. Even bigger of a dongle. The next step is to then plug the HDMI cable into into the Elgato capture card. When we do this, note that you won't need to use the HDMI out port. You only need to use the HDMI in. So here we are. We'll just plug that in there. There we go. Looking good. Now we've got even bigger of a dongle, right? The next step is then getting the USB-C and powering this bad boy. You need to plug the USB-C into the, uh, of course, the USB-C port. So very quickly, I'll explain how that works again. You've got the iPad. You've got Infinite Flight running. That video then comes through this cable, the HDMI adapter through the HDMI cable into the Elgato capture card. The magic then happens in here and then that input comes out of the USB-C port and runs directly into your PC via USB. Okay, so I hope that wasn't that confusing. I know there's a lot of wires and of course what I'll do is I'll also include a diagram on the screen as well. Right now, just to quickly show you what we talked about just to make it a little bit easier for you. Now that we've covered how to put the Elgato capture card together to capture the iPad gameplay, what I'll do now is put all mine together, right? And I'll show you what my setup looks like once I have it all plugged in and quickly explain it once more 
so that it makes sense once everything's up and running. One thing to note is that each capture card, for example, the HD60S, which I use here, they all have their own softwares. And for me, I use the Elgato 4K Capture Utility, and I'll show that on my PC screen in just a moment. But each capture card, yes, uses its own software. So when you get your capture card, make sure you, of course, do a little bit of research, go onto the Elgato website, and make sure you download the correct software. The reason why it's important to, of course, download the correct software is that it's an extra layer of protection, right? It will make sure that the video and audio from the iPad is correctly being passed through the Elgato capture card and into your PC. This way you won't have any sound issues or video issues. Um, you need that software basically to make it work. Okay, so now everything's where it needs to be. I've got the um, the streaming software open uh, with the overlays and stuff. Um, but very similar concept, the exact same concept to what I just showed you with the iPad Air. We've got this adapter with the HDMI cable connected, and now I have power connected, right, so the iPad doesn't die. What we then do, with the 4K capture utility running, or whatever software that your Elgato requires, we'll then grab this adapter and plug it directly into the bottom of the iPad. There we go, it's plugged in, and then you should see Infinite Flight pop up on the screen of Streamlabs OBS. There we go. Okay, so now we've got all of that set up, uh, we can go ahead and take a look at Streamlabs itself. I personally use Streamlabs, you can also use OBS Studio. I just prefer how integrated things are in Streamlabs and how much easier it is to configure your streams. But what we'll go ahead and do here, as you can see, this is my um, setup. This is how I stream with the iPad and the face cam and some cool information all over the place. What we'll go ahead and do is click on a new scene. And from here, we'll go and set up a very basic, I'll show you how to set up a very basic stream overlay. So if we click on sources here, add a new source to your scene. And it gives you, on Windows at least, it gives you uh, this many options where you can add super cool things like custom widgets, a member goal, view account for Twitch or YouTube or whatever platform you're streaming on, chat box, uh, subscription goal, donation goal, super chat goal. That's a cool one. I haven't seen that before. Here is why I like Streamlabs because of all of these features that you have to choose from. But what we're interested in is uh, the essential sources and the general sources section. This is where you can capture your display, your game capture, window capture, anything really that you want it to do, it'll do. But in this case, what we need to do when we are capturing gameplay through an Elgato capture card, we need to click on video capture device. And you can see on the description here that it says video capture device, display a video from webcams, capture cards, and any other devices, um, supports built-in webcams. So if you would like to have a face cam, you'd use this feature, a Logitech webcam, for example, um, or the last bullet point, as you can see, capture cards, Elgato, um, Avermedia, Blackmagic, whatever you really want to use. You have the Razer ones. I'm sure there are a lot of capture cards out there. Once we're here, just press add source, and then it'll give you the option to, um, of course, you can see that I've already set up these scenes on a video capture device. We'll click add new source instead and we'll just say i don't know ipads there we go and we'll click add source as you can see it's automatically selected the uh display of the ipad you do have the option to of course capture any other device that falls into this category like for example the one that says eos webcam utility is my face cam which you're you're watching me through right now that's a bit more complicated though we won't talk about that today but what we're interested in is the game capture and then the elgato capture card name hd60s we'll click on that we don't really need to tweak with any other of these settings and then we'll just click close now we have the option to drag this around the screen and position it to where we want it to be if you want to add a background for example uh, you'd click on image and then you can see that you can import png uh, jpeg gifs uh, anything really we'd add the source and then i mean that looks fine that's a background i already have so we'll just use this one this is just a screenshot from infinite flight an easier way of doing this is going down to uh, transform and then pressing fit to screen and it will shrink it really to where you need it it might need a bit of cropping um so we'll quickly crop it down and stretch it to the size of the screen. There we go. That's fine. That's now our stream background. And really what you do is you just play with the layers that you have and sort of configure something that is to your liking. You can see that when you capture gameplay from a capture card, you have this horrific, um, because it depends on the resolution of the device that you're streaming from. If it was an iPhone, it wouldn't have this much um, black area. But because the uh, iPad resolution is quite, it's pretty much a square, um, it'll have this empty gap around the sides. So what we'll go ahead and do here is we'll hit the Windows key and it'll pretty much just crop it right to where we want it to be and you can i mean you can make this however you really want it but for me i just leave it as the shape of the ipad because that makes the most sense and let's say we wanted the left hand side of the screen to be the game capture here now you can see infinite flight on this side of the screen which is really really nice if you have a look down here 
where it says iPad. This is also the audio coming from the iPad, right? This is your on-screen mixer, and this will pretty much show you all of the audio capture, right? So, for example, if I was to go on to sources here and choose uh, audio input capture, this can be a supports a built-in microphone, USB microphones, or other USB devices. The other USB device is the Elgato capture card. We'll click add source, um, and the microphone that we're using today, we'll add a new one. Um, audio, I'll just put mic here just to make it look easier for you. And you can see it's pretty much as it needs to be. You can change the offset in milliseconds or anything, and you can change if you need to monitor the audio. It's a bit more confusing. Again, this isn't a Streamlabs tutorial. I'll let you look at this stuff more in depth on um, a different YouTube tutorial if you'd like to learn a bit more about Streamlabs. But now that we've added that, you can see that, again, in the mixer, every time I talk, the bar will go up, right? Looking good. So now what we're doing is we're capturing the mic input, what I'm talking into right now, and we're also capturing the iPad input. I guess whilst we're here, we can then go ahead and add some uh, extra cool bits. Like, for example, if we go down to the view account, uh, you can see that you can do Facebook view account, YouTube and Twitch uh, or tr tr Trovo. I've never heard of that. View account, we'll just add the source and you can see that then on the screen, we also have um, a live count of how many people are viewing the stream, which is just cool. It's, a, it's just a cool feature. Again, you can explore this more in depth by yourself. I don't need to explain this much about it. These are really just the basics of how you connect an iPad screen to a PC and then carry that over to a streaming software, which you can then stream to YouTube. And now speaking of the devil streaming to YouTube, what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and show you a quick tutorial on how to then schedule the stream to YouTube. Okay, so we're now on YouTube. You can see I have a very interesting um, recommended homepage here. MacBook Air unboxing, <laughs> Andrew Tate. Daz Games, I don't know. Anyway, what you want to do is you want to head up to, of course, the top right corner of the screen where it says create and you want to hit go live. Now from here, you do have the option to schedule streams, uh, stream directly from a camera, which I don't know why you would do that unless you're doing a weird Q&A, um, or you can just stream straight away. I don't really recommend doing this option. I prefer to schedule streams and then stream on the dot when it's ready to start. And you can see we've got an upcoming stream here, Infinite Flight Zurich to Mallorca. Anyway, so what you want to do is you want to head to the top right corner of the screen and you want to press on streaming software. And that's because we're streaming from Streamlabs OBS or OBS Studio, for example. If you've done streams in the past, it'll just give you this random pop-up where you can reuse the settings. I like to create new every time because it's just, it's just nicer to go through and make sure everything's as it needs to be. And I've also had some issues with thumbnails in the past by reusing settings. So I don't like to use that one. Anyway, from here, you pretty much go and add your title for the stream. Um, you go ahead and type in your description, which mine's automatically there. Um, you then choose what category that your, your stream falls into. That could be anything. I can imagine in this case, it's going to be gaming though. And you just search infinite flight here, which is just there. And this will pretty much, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about here, but under a stream, it'll tell you the game that the creator's playing. Just, just highlights that a bit more. Um, you then want to select your thumbnail. I don't have any thumbnails at hand right now for this test, but it can be um, any photo you want right within YouTube's guidelines when you click the show more button it'll then give you even more um, check boxes and bits of information that you have to answer you can add tags so for example if you want to get your stream more out there you can type in planes avgi um, infinite flight infinite flight update whatever it is right whatever you're trying to stream just to get yourself into that sort of uh, search engine one thing to note is that the, the majority of this is the same settings for videos as well because of course after you end your stream it's then going to turn into a video on YouTube unless you choose it not to. You hit next, you can choose whether you then, if you're eligible, um, would like to monetize this content and make some money off of the ad revenue. Show me the money. And then next you have some more customizations which are um, pretty much more tailored towards the stream itself. Next to be the visibility, so you pretty much, and of course this again is for if you're scheduling a stream, um, you can choose whether it's private and you want to share it privately, unlisted, members only. So if you have channel members, you can do member only streams, which is cool. I don't really have the time for that, but if you did, that's kind of a cool feature. Um, and then of course you can hit public and then you'd go ahead and choose the date and the time that you'd like to stream at. And then that'll of course give everybody a countdown to when the stream starts. Anyway, with that being said, what I'll do now is I'll just go ahead and show you my stuff that I use. Um, and just to give you a bit more of an idea if you wanted to take streaming more seriously, I'll just show you some of the equipment that I have here. And we'll start with the camera that we're looking through right now. Um, you can see that I have my face cam sort of attached up here on a tripod so that it can look over the monitor towards me, which is nice. Hello. 
My camera just requires an EOS webcam utility and it pretty much plugs. It's really easy. It just plugs straight in via USB to the PC and then I power it with a special power cable here so that I don't need a battery in it. Otherwise it would go flat if it was running off a battery during a stream. I then have um, a lot of padding around here. Soundproofing. This of course um, reduces the reverb in the rooms so that when I'm streaming you can't hear too much background noise which is lovely. Then here I have a, um, a ring light. This provides light on the streams to light me up in the face cam which of course is um it's it's a necessity you don't really want to be sitting in the dark when you're streaming over the back here i have my pc and a load of cables um we won't talk about this it's not really relevant this is of course just what i use um and then i have this bad boy right here this is um just a secondary webcam for the infinite flight streams you can see that over here it's just a razor webcam um which captures like the hand cam gameplay when i'm playing infinite flight I also have just some spare headphones back there, these being my most recent ones, which currently don't work with my XLR, which is what we'll talk about next. The last thing to talk about is my microphone and how I use that, so we'll go ahead and do that now. So the microphone that I use is the Shure um, MV7. It's a lovely podcast-styled microphone. Um, it's okay. I, I'm, I'm wanting a new one. It's nice. It's relatively expensive. I think one thing to note with this tutorial is that streaming Infinite Flight and getting this sort of equipment is going to set you back a little bit. For me, that was fine because it was more of an investment to work. For example, the capture cards, I think it's like £150 and iPads, whatever you want it to be, right? You can get some cheap ones around the microphone short mv7 lovely microphone there's loads of microphones on the market and um, you can use the yeti snowball the the hyper x quadcast the sm7b logitech just released a new microphone which i'm most likely going to get this is a brilliant microphone i know i'm getting scarily close to the camera now but this is because i'm going to explain another pro tip when it comes to streaming and having a microphone or a good enough microphone a lot of microphones now have you can see just about here um a headphone an, a, an audio jack input right and this pretty much allows you to monitor your voice whilst you're talking into a microphone like for example right now i can hear myself this is what like singers do right when they're on stage and they have their earphones in their ear they can hear themselves sing um but anyway yeah this is an xlr microphone it runs into a go xlr mini which i'll show you now the go xlr mini is just like a, a little mixer basically um where i can mute my microphone uh, adjust sort of like in-game audio levels and that sort of stuff and i can even bleep out if i I'm so sorry if this has been confusing. There's a lot to do, but the very basics, which is why I highlighted this in the start and when I showed you how to set up Streamlabs, the very basics are simply a capture card, plugging it into your PC and then setting it up in Streamlabs OBS. Anyway, that then brings us to the end of this tutorial. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment. And if you'd like to support me as a creator, you can become a channel member today. I'll make sure that's up on the top right corner of the screen right now. The link's in the description. And if you'd like to support me even more, and you can send a super thanks on this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video or stream.